Number 83. A sample of gallium bromide, which is GABr3, weighing 0.165 grams, was dissolved in water and treated with silver nitrate, which is AgNO3, resulting in the precipitation of 0.299 grams of silver bromide, AgBr. Using these data, or data, to compute the percent gallium by mass in GABr3. Okie dokie. So, let's get down to it. So, it looks like they're trying to describe a reaction here, right? They're telling you that we're starting off with gallium bromide, right, GABr3. It was dissolved in water and then treated or reacted with silver nitrate. And they told us one of the products. So the first thing is, is that I have to make a equation. So if you want to pause the video and try to think of the equation yourself. Okay, we've done tons of problems. If you guys have been on the playlist, we've done tons of problems in the beginning of this playlist dealing with how to make equations and balance them. So if you need more help, you could always go back and check those videos out on the chapter four playlist. Um, so this one will kind of be a little bit, you know, at a quicker pace. Now there's a little trick here, guys. They said that the GABR3 was dissolved in water. Dissolved in water just means that this GABr3 is just going to be aqueous. It's not necessarily reacting with water. It's just being dissolved. So I don't have to include water in my equation. So in this case, the equation is going to be GABr3 plus it's being treated with the silver nitrate. That's what it's being reacted with. AgNO3. And this is a double displacement, right? Outers go with outers, inners go with inners, but that's all review from this past playlist, right? So that's why the first product they gave us was AGBR, it's inners with inners. And then the other product would be the gallium and the nitrate, but GA, it would be GANO3-3 because gallium has a plus three charge. Now, by just making the equation is perfect, but we just need to make sure that we balance it. So um, it's not balanced here. I see that I now have three NO3s. So I just need to put a three in front of here. This tells me that I have three AGs. So I'm gonna put a three here and now we're all balanced. Cool. Now I like to just write out what we got, right? They told us that it's going to result in a precipitation of 0.299 grams of AGBR. 0.299 grams of AGBR. And they told us that we had a total sample of gallium bromide, which was 0.165. And we want to know the percent gallium of GABR3. Well, let's just put on the side here what the percent formula is. We've already seen this, right? A percent of any compound, in this case it's gallium, is always equal to the mass of that element, so it'd be the grams of the gallium divided by the total mass of the compound. So I'm looking for the grams of the GABr3. And since it's a percent, I'm just gonna multiply by 100. Now I'm just gonna make this a little bigger and I'm gonna put it over here. So if I wanna find out this percentage, they told us that the GABr3 is weighing 0.165 grams. So I know this bottom number, right? So I basically have this amount. It's always being times by 100. I'm trying to solve for this. So the only thing that I don't know is I don't know how many grams of gallium I have. That's what I'm trying to solve for secretly. And that's where this information is gonna be. So it doesn't really matter what other compound you go to. It just has to be the one that has gallium in it. So there's two of them this and this, right? But I guess let's just make it easier on ourselves. Since we want to find out specifically in GABr3, I will look for this gallium, okay? So I'm just going to say I need to know the grams of gallium coming from GABr3, okay? We've done tons of problems where we have information from one compound and we got to go to another compound. That is dimensional analysis. And what's the flow chart? It's this. Right, it's grams to moles to moles to grams. So let's just, you know, cater it to what we have. 
So I'm going to always start with my given, right? So in this case, it's going to be 0 0.299 grams of not A, but specifically of the AGBR. I could go to moles of AGBR. And now I'm going to convert over. Now specifically, I want to find out how many grams of the gallium. So ultimately, whoop, ultimately I want to get to moles of gallium and then grams of gallium, right? Okay, so this is kind of our little thing over here. Let's get started. Well, we start with what you're given, 0 0.299, and this is now grams of AGBR. Use that ratio, right? Whenever we're converting, we're just multiplying by ratio. Throw the unit that you don't want on the bottom. So grams of AGBR go on the bottom. And look over to see what you're going to next. So moles of AGBR. A gram to mole relationship between the same compound is always the periodic table, right? So on the periodic table, it's always one mole. So wherever the mole is, you put a one there, okay? And then the number on the periodic table of AG plus BR goes with the grams. So I'm just gonna do the math real quick for one AG and one BR. And I get roughly 187.8. Okay, cross out the units. And now we just keep going. I'm not at my destination, so I'm gonna times by another ratio. Mole of AGBR go on the bottom. And now I'm gonna switch over to my compound. But now here's the thing, guys. If I want to get to moles of gallium, I first have to get to moles of the whole compound. So I'm going to put moles of GABR3. This is what we've been doing, right? And a mole to uh, a mole to mole relationship of different compounds is always the balance equation. So maybe I'll put like balance equation here. So this is like the bigger picture, and then we can simplify it and, you know, single the gallium out. We're going to be using the coefficients of these two compounds. In front of the AGBR, I see that I have a 3. And in front of the GABR3, I see that I have nothing, which means that technically I have 1, right? So I'm going to put 3 AGBRs for every 1. GABR3, 3 mole of AGBR for every 1 mole of gallium bromide. This unit cancels out, and now we're not at our destination yet, so multiply by another ratio. Throw the unit that you don't want on the opposite side. And now, in this case, I will go to moles of gallium. Now, this type of relationship, where you have mole of both things, and then you have an element and a compound, the numbers that go here are going to be based off of what is in your compound. Now, for this type of relationship to exist, you have to say, okay, if I assume that I have one whole compound, how many galliums are in this one whole compound? There's only one, right? Just GA. So for every one, whole compound, the one goes with the whole compound. How many galliums were there? Oh, there was only one. So you put the one up here. So technically it's gonna be the same number. One divided by one is one. But just to show the work, there you guys go. One last step, we want grams of gallium. So let's just keep going. Put mole of gallium on the bottom. And then gram of gallium up top. This is now going back to the periodic table. A gram to mole relationship between the same element is the periodic table. One mole is whatever it is on the periodic table. Gallium is 69.72. And now I finally have what I'm searching for, right? That was the whole point. So let's see what I get. Let's plug this into the calculator. 0 0.299 divided by 187.8 divided by 3 times 69.72. I get 0 0.0370, and that's grams of gallium. Okay, so now I know that this is 0 0.0370 grams. Part divided by whole times 100. 
So let's, let's do it out. Percent of gallium equals, since I now have the correct units, they're both in grams, I don't really have to, uh, you know, put the units in. I know that they're correct. So I have 0 0.0370 on the top, and I have 0 0.165 on the bottom, and then just times it by 100. Let's see. 0 0.037 divided by 0 0.165 times 100, and I get 22.4. So if I just maybe scooch this up a little bit, and then I'd say percent gallium equals 22.4, and yeah, three sig figs, so we're good to go. And that is the end. Not bad. So guys, what do you think? Hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video and let's keep working hard, okay? I will see you in future lessons. Have a great day. All right, bye-bye.